Today, we think of the settling of the American West as peaceful, but it was never that simple. In the 1800s, as thousands of settlers moved west, the Army established dozens of military posts throughout the Southwest and the Plains states. Soldiers were sent to control outbreaks of violence as the newcomers competed with the native people for land and resources. In 1866, two black cavalry and two black infantry regiments were established. They were segregated, led by white officers, and made up over a tenth of the frontier army. Initially, the army recruited U.S. colored troop Civil War veterans. Other young African American men began to enlist to escape massive unemployment and racial violence in the South. I engendered a great liking for the cavalry soldier and enlisted on the 16th day of July, 1867, for the Indian Wars that was then raging in Kansas and Colorado. Reuben Waller. I got tired of looking a mule in the face from sunrise to sunset. Thought there must be a better living in this world. Charles Creek. What did I think when I seen all them soldiers? Well, I wants to be one too. I didn't care what side, I just wants a gun and a horse and to be a soldier. Madison Brewer. Military service offered benefits, insured rights banned in southern states, and conferred status. Service held out the possibility of respect, equality, and full citizenship for the soldiers, their families, and their communities. Nicknamed Buffalo Soldiers, the black regiments fought in campaigns all across the West. But fighting was actually secondary. Black and white soldiers alike constructed forts and roads, guarded stagecoaches and cattle drives, laid railroad lines and telegraph wires, and delivered the mail. I was sent with a detail of 12 of my men to carry the mail to Fort Bliss. At Eagle Springs, we were attacked by about 100 Apaches. The fight lasted several hours. Sergeant Jacob Wilkes. Large-scale battles were rare. More often, the soldiers engaged in skirmishes with roving bands of Indian warriors. We used to have a fight every day down on Lewisheeta. A feller on the flanks never knew what minute he was going to have a horse race back to the command with Indians a close second. First Sergeant Sheldon Shropshire. Most interactions between the army and the Indian tribes were hostile, but Buffalo soldiers also protected Creek, Chickasaw, and Cherokee farmers from raiding Kiowas and Comanches in Oklahoma, and Kiowa and Ute families from attack by white militias in Texas. The soldiers forced rebellious Indians back onto reservations, but also removed white pioneers who had illegally settled on Indian treaty land. The Indian Wars ended in 1890 with the massacre of the Sioux in the Battle of Wounded Knee in South Dakota. Buffalo soldiers were not involved in the battle, but were stationed at the Sioux Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in the aftermath. For African-American soldiers that re-enlisted after the Indian Wars ended, their regiments continued on to new postings. Those returning to civilian life faced a society where they had fewer rights than when they enlisted, where racism was institutionalized in Jim Crow laws. The military would remain segregated for over 50 more years. 